This weekend on Top Billing, stylist Candace O'Neill and property developer Ruben Yeller choose understated elegance for their timeless wedding look. Leading an all-female rap revolution, hip-hop's Gigi Lemayne stakes her claim as an independent artist. This 1920s-style cabaret transforms your reality the moment you step through the door. And designer Tristan Duplessis brings a nightclub feel to the suburbs in a makeover you don't want to miss. Piano man Mash Mashalwane wins Best African Jazz Artist of 2018. And your presenter this evening, Dr. Fezen Kiza, brings you the show from this modern tribute to South Africa's natural splendor. Good evening and a very warm welcome to Top Billing. As a stylist and makeup artist to the stars, Candice O'Neill has seen every blue steel look in the book. To steal our hearts was going to take more than chiseled features, and Ruben Yella was up for the challenge. Bringing modernism together with tradition, this venue in the Breda Valley was fully booked when Candice and Ruben first chose it. As luck would have it, a date did become available, which seemed a blessing on their union. Ruben and I met nearly 12 years ago, but we actually met now recently, a few years back. I was looking for a retail store space, <laughs> and he's got a friend who was kept on, he was my agent, showing me retail spaces. And then he was like, no, no, I want to talk to you about my friend. I think you guys should go on a date. I've got the perfect man for you. I was literally like, no, like seriously. And he's like, okay, well, he's here. Do you want to speak to him? <laughs> so he kind of put us on the spot. Well, Candice is beautiful, strong, go-getter and she's got such a good heart she always puts other people first and I just love her and she's an amazing mother to our child Sienna and I just love her with all my heart. For her gown the bride wanted long sleeves which is why they got married in the cool of May. From the workmanship it's hard to believe that Candice only approached designer Lucia Oblikova Brits six weeks before the big day. This dress got lots of elements of soft, rich, very intricate details that represents Candice's personality as Candice is very sophisticated, elegant and confident woman and I think it captures the beauty within her. I can't even explain how beautiful it is. The detailing that's gone into it, I just want everyone to be wowed. The glass marquee let the Vihook Mountain and Valley provide a green and gold autumn backdrop, reflected through the table designs by Candice and Marley Needham. What we did with the decor for the theme of this wedding is we went with all glass and crystal candle holders so we get all that shine and then we've got these beautiful underplates with the gold rim, gold cutlery so we get that gold in. And for the black that she wanted, we brought in a black dance floor with their initials on a logo in gold. So it's going to be absolutely beautiful with these white tables, the glass, the crystal. It's going to look spectacular. It takes a brave heart to go for a less is more approach with these elegantly simple arrangements. There was definite method to the bride's strategy. She really wanted something that's timeless, that when she looks back at her pictures in 20 years time, she wants her ceremony and the reception, everything to be just beautiful. So for pictures and all of that, it's gonna be fantastic. And then everything you get with the venue is just, it's a no brainer. If the professionals were entrusted with the wedding, the groom took a DIY route to asking Candice for her hand. When Ruben proposed, it was actually, and I'm usually like a cop, I can detect anything. I was about eight months pregnant and the whole week I'd been saying I had such a sore back and everything. So he's like, well, why don't you go to the spa and go get a massage? So I was like, okay, cool. It's like a whole day of treatments, literally a whole day. 
So basically when I got back to my house, my cousin was standing outside the door and wanted to welcome us in. As I walked out of my room, Ruben was standing there, but he was in a suit and looking so smart. And I was looking at him like, hello. And he turned me outside and we've got a big balcony at the top and he had put the letters, marry me, with candles all written on the balcony with the heart. As he did that, I was literally in tears and everyone knows that I don't cry. And I was emotional and crying. And he had cooked us a dinner, the most amazing dinner. It was just a beautiful evening. Incorporating the exchange of rings and vows, the ceremony followed Reuben's Jewish tradition. There were also many blessings from friends like Michael and Portia Kwadi. Wow! I mean, Candace and Reuben are just the best. I mean, they are best friends above everything else. Look, I think they both have a matching personality. Bubbly, fun, a very lovable couple and I think that connection just worked for them. But most of it all, Candace and Ruben looked absolutely stunning today. Candace's wedding dress, she is a vision. What a dream. Candace is getting in her dress and seeing Candace in her dress, I think just blew everyone away. And the ceremony was absolutely beautiful. The way they incorporated Jewish religion into the ceremony and to see how they combined the two just shows you how their relationship works. Well, I've got two other son-in-laws, so this is number three son-in-law, we'll give him a chance. <laughs> Welcome him to the O'Neill family, the O'Neill clan, yeah, and I'm happy with him, good boy. Uh, you know, they just started a new family, and what I appreciate about it is that they really care for each other, and I really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Everyone teared up as the couple let off a balloon in memory of Candice's mother, Angela O'Neill, and Ruben's father, Dave Yeller, who have both passed away. A remembrance which was more of a celebration. I think we're having an amazing time here. Um, amazing venue, the weather, the people, the vibe, love is in the air. We're talking sunset, we're talking Cape Town, we're talking, we're talking love, we're talking energy, we're talking gin bar. I mean, everything is here. <laughs> the cake was iced in a wedding gown style, though only one dress ruled them all that night. MC Travis Tauti had some wisdom for the groom. It's been an incredible journey watching the two of them be together. It's actually quite phenomenal. What I would say to Ruben is that a real man never stops trying to win someone over even after he's gotten her. And if they honor the commitment that they made to each other today, they get to keep choosing each other, They'll, they can take over the world. So what makes Ruben and Candace a wonderful couple is that the fact that it's so pure and so unedited. And I think that's the most important and fundamental underpinning point of any relationship, is it for it to flow and be as natural as possible. So Ruben, you are married to the Jewel of Durban. You are married to the Beyonce of Durban. And treasure and love her in the same way that she will. And I think you'll have a long and happy life. Ruben's a success in property, Candice in styling. Both love life and together they're dynamite. So our future plans are definitely, Ruben's a businessman, I'm a businesswoman. We want to build an empire together, we want to have more kids, definitely want to travel, and I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else but Ruben. Here's to a healthy family, a growing circle of friends, and no end to the dancing. You guys go together like angel hair pasta and basil pesto. You'll make a beautiful bambini too. Congratulations and the best of the good life to you. Coming up, from a new cabaret club to his daring take on life in the suburbs, designer Tristan Duplessis breaks the mold. The best of the good life. Restaurants vary in theme and cuisine, but it is still rare for the formula to change that much from lunch, dinner, and your choice of refreshment. At Alison Fifth and Santon, designer Tristan Duplessis threw a whole 20s cabaret into the mix, and it caused more than just a bit of a stir. The idea of this edgy dinner theater experience in Santon is that you step into an alternate reality and open your mind to new possibilities. One part of which is a South African menu with a chef's twist, courtesy of Jacques Cronier. What inspired the name Alison Fifth? 
It's Alice in Wonderland, escaping reality and come and have a nice restaurant experience with cocktails, theater, and then also a nice vibe. Lewis Carroll would be so proud. I mean, it seems like everything has been thought out, right down to the interiors. Who's the genius behind it? Tristan is our man. Oh, Tristan, nice Hi. to meet you. Good to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Tristan. Okay, first I'll meet you up in the kitchen. Oh, go do your sure. thing, Jacques. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tristan, I love how when you walk in here, there's that beautiful shimmering ceiling that's complemented so well with the walnut wall. The entrance was a very important part of the space. We wanted to transport people from reality into a night where anything could happen. So we've got the burnt out wood panels and that shimmering solid piece of stainless steel that we got made in Cape Town and shipped up in one piece, which was pretty insane. But there's little details like that all the way through. Tristan mixes sumptuous velvets and marble, inspired by 1920s New York clubs with modern exposed concrete of 2019. This is an example of how we've taken a traditional aesthetic or finish and put our own literal twist in it. We've got the French panel that curves completely over, which was very difficult to execute, but I think done really well by our craftsmen that built this space. There's more examples of bringing that contemporary edge in. We've got the illustrated wall mural by Jana and Kurs, the faux fur chairs, and the element that wraps it all together is this walnut paneling that follows all the way through into the private wine area. There we've got members that can store their fine whiskies, wine, it's a beautiful space, and it's completely private for the top echelon of the members here. Hundreds of tassels make up an impressive chandelier with a screen of Art Nouveau mirrors reflecting the rich marble finishes. This is the heart of the shop. We've built the interior around the fact that everything should be a stage. We have our stage behind the booths over here in the center of the shop. In the VIP area over here, we've got a table that turns into a stage and even the bar has stairs that performers can walk up and that becomes a stage as well. We've used a lot of rich finishes here. We wanted this to feel very luxurious and glamorous. We've got the red Dolce & Gabbana marble with the antique mirror, the aged bronze, even got the marble light fittings that we imported from the UK. Tristan, you had me when you said that the bar's a stage. I'm not saying I'm the best dancer in the world, but I'm pretty sure I'm the best dancer in the room. <laughs> well, let's go see. <laughs> The tradition of an all-in-one venue for cocktails, dinner and dance was fashionable in the 80s and it's due for a return. Okay, so this is the stage bar. It's both really. I wanted this whole place to turn into a performance that's completely integrated into the experience. But building this bar was also an intensive exercise using specially imported Arabescata marble from Italy. All of these wall tiles at the back of bar were handmade in South Africa, quite painstakingly, but they're really beautiful. And I think that contrasts with the brass mesh, the Italian marble, the French polished walnut, create a very glamorous and upscale environment. And I know I did say that um, <clears throat> I could bust a few moves on you, but I don't know if this Arabescato marble would be able to handle me. I think it can handle you. I just don't know if you can handle it. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Gonna, gotta get a feel for it, you know, you're gonna loosen up. Oh wow, this is a different perspective. I think uh, I might just need a bit of liquid courage before I do this. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> oh wow, doesn't just look beautiful, it's very functional as well. Let's see if those cocktails hold up to the international standard. During America's Prohibition era, gin cocktails became an art form in clubs, and mixologist Beggy Kumalo continues the tradition. Peggy, brother, what are you making me today? So uh, today is, I'm going to make you one of our famous cocktails. It's called a star test. So uh, I'm going to start with gin. And then a uh, bit of a citrus. OK, I like the flair. He's got the. <laughs> it's all part of the show. This is a uh, fishy squeezed lime juice just to keep the fishiness uh, coming through. And then just to bind all the flavors and uh, the sweet, I'm gonna use a saline solution. It's just a fancy name to say salt and water. I'm gonna use thyme to also bring out quite a nice flavor of cucumber, lime juice, and amazing gin that you're using. So just to combine those ingredients, I'm just gonna shake the cocktail. So when all is done and set, this is served in a light bulb. Okay, now this is unique. This I've never seen before. We needed to think out of the box. So when it gets to you, you just grow it up and then put a straw and then enjoy yourself. 
Biggie, this yeah. is the most unique drink I've ever seen in my life. I almost feel like I should be studying or something under this light. You know. Let's actually have a taste. You should see more cocktails and more great stuff that we do here. It's quite amazing. We were impressed to see they use steel straws here, balancing style with sustainability. Oh wow, this tastes amazing. And that appetite is coming through. I feel like it's time for me to eat. Biggie, I'm gonna see you later. I think Jacques's got some food ready for me. By all means, sir. Jacques, I hope you have something great planned because I've worked up quite an appetite. Yes, I do. We've got a three-course meal going for today, starting with the Alice salad. That's basically just a mixture of freshly picked leaves, a little bit of red onions, and then obviously the fix. That's gonna give it a little bit of sweetness. And then uh, the matureness of the cheese is giving that ultimate flavor coming through it, the sweetness of the preserved fix. Okay, this is my favorite part. Jacques focuses on clear, evocative tastes. Wow, I can really taste the sweetness of the fig coming through, that rustic taste of the cheese. And I won't lie, it accompanies quite well with this cocktail. What do you have as our main? The oxtail, it's one of our signature dishes. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Now you can enjoy what everybody else is enjoying when they come to Alice and Phil. It was a new experience enjoying a slow-cooked oxtail with herb dumplings while an acrobat slung from the chandelier performed a sultry aerial ballet. One of a kind entertainment and decor that is to die for. I'm pretty sure cocktails that you'll only find here. Alison Fifth does not disappoint. When they said check your expectations at the door and expect the unexpected, they meant it. So the dinner theater cabaret look is dazzling for a night out. Now could you do the same for a house or apartment you live in 24 seven? Once Tristan got the idea in his head, the only way to see if it worked was to put it on its feet. From his work in nightclubs, Tristan Duplessis leans towards darker colors. He does so to set the stage for light and to do it at home, he needed a place with enough natural light. Tristan, you've made quite a name for yourself locally as well as internationally. What led to your love for design? Ever since I was a kid, I, I loved design and architecture um, and I appreciated design from a young age. I always loved driving around looking at the, the newest, coolest houses and cool restaurants um, and luckily I get to do that for a living now. You've renovated your house quite a bit. What was the process like? The process was amazing and difficult at the same time. I found probably one of the worst houses in the best area, which is Parkhurst. I've always wanted to live here. And we started the process, which took four months. It was a lot of blood, sweat and tears, but now we're here. It's not usual for a residential space to have such a dark color palette. That's actually the first thing I noticed. Because the Parkhurst stands are quite small, I wanted to work with that. And instead of designing a house, I wanted to create a space that felt like a New York penthouse. But with this house, I took a lot of risks kind of part of my personality and I wanted to push some boundaries. So we've got all of the black and stone, but we've got our Cartier brass and orange tabletop, which is quite unexpected. We put the pool in the middle to bring that lightness and basically to focus the whole house onto the pool. So it's not this black, harsh exterior. And probably the biggest risk I took is I got David Briss from Cape Town to paint on my neighbor's wall. And I haven't had any complaints yet. I can't wait to see what other risks you took with the rest of the house. Tearing down internal walls revealed an open plan space. Once beams and columns had secured the structure, serious design could begin. Oh wow, Tristan, this is a very unique kitchen. You have designed a lot of high-end restaurants and your own kitchen was featured in the Design Joburg 2018. What goes into conceptualizing a space like this? Well, I think in any kitchen space, form should follow function. And first of all, you need to decide what you want your kitchen for. So for my kitchen, I wanted to create a very social space that became the heart of the home. Rather than just having someone slaving away in a, in a kitchen behind closed walls, I wanted this to be the central focus for the house. When it came to choosing the finishes and how the kitchen worked, there was a lot of practical consideration. On the top, we've got this solid granite piece that I can chop straight onto and clean off. When you look at all the drawers, there's a space for, for everything. You have such OCD. Sometimes I think that too. 
Um, I even created spoon holders here, so when you're cooking, you put your utensils in here, lift it out and wash it. So you can That's keep everything smart. super clean. So about washing, we did a full freeform basin here. Instead of just doing a normal drop-in basin, we've got two different levels. We did tinted glass to show off all the glassware. And my favorite feature is the black marble backdrop that we have, which is made with two solid slabs and backlit very gently with a hidden LED lighting. What made you decide to put this very big feature in the kitchen? Well, I love marble. I think it's amazing that it's just taken out of the ground. We just slice it up and we get this beautiful feature. I couldn't use it on any other tops because it's not practical, but I got to utilize it at the back here, creating quite a dramatic feature in the kitchen and definitely my favorite. So in the family dining area, I wanted to soften the space a bit, make it a bit more playful. I've taken a break from the strong linear lines running through and I've got a round table, the round lights. It becomes a bit more of a relaxed social space. I've got some quirky details that I picked up when I was in Los Angeles recently from Jonathan Adler. We've got really cool coasters, this quirky, maybe a bit edgy Xanax. And a pop of color. From this sci-fi themed fixture to the understated lounge, the living area is as practical and comfortable as it is stylish. Okay, so this is my open plan lounge that leads onto the kitchen. The wooden slatting brings a completely different feel to the room. It almost draws everything together. Yes, yeah, so well, we wanted to create some warmth with the wooden slatting. We picked up the marble theme and we've got this big floating marble fireplace. I've got all of my favorite books, my awards, my crowning moment, which was being the fourth best dressed person in 2017. On GQ! <laughs> yeah, we mix up different heights in terms of the tables. I've got my favorite piece that's come with me through all of my houses. But this is a very personal space where it's just me, my girlfriend, and my dog. I can't tell if this is a TV set or an art display. Listen, it's a bit of both. It's such an interesting screen because you can switch between TV and displaying artwork. The thing I hate about having a TV in a space is when it's off, it's just this big black box. So now when it's off, at least it's displaying some art and it treads that line between art and TV. Working from the US to Italy and East Africa, Tristan has collected fascinating pieces. So is this where the wild things are? Basically, yes. <laughs> I've got a fascination with street art and I've got a lot of street art inspired pieces um, all around the house. I mean, there we've got our furry guy. I've got a piece by a collective that comes out of Los Angeles called Circle. They actually came to South Africa a while ago for one of my projects. They did this huge, beautiful mural at Gemelli in Bryanston, which was really successful. And I bought a couple of their pieces. My two core sculptures, which are probably my favorite things in the house. In the whole house, out of probably, all the most beautiful things in the house. Probably, yes. Shows I've got like a little bit of a weird taste when it comes to my art and stuff like that. And then walking down the passage, I've picked up my love for art. I've got the smaller David Britz pieces tying up with that big mural outside. I like the idea of having that juxtaposition of the big piece and these smaller pieces framed. I've got two more circle pieces and then a really cool, maybe evocative piece by John O'Wood at the end. The master suite sees a change of gear. So this is the, the main bedroom. Beautiful, I love how you've carried through the theme, but somehow this is much softer. I've tried to keep it quite minimal. It's just things that I feel comfortable being around. I see you play around quite a bit with the lighting. Yes, well, I love light fixtures, and I just love them as more art pieces than just giving you practical light. Maybe they don't all make sense together, but I just wanted to create a space that was curated just for me. And of course, elements of monochrome and the marble going into the bathroom. Yeah, so we've pulled the monochromatic feeling all the way through. It's just something I feel comfortable in and then picked up the marble finishes just to add a bit of glamour to the bathroom. The rest of it has this concrete finish, which is quite hard. And that juxtaposition of having the marble below it just makes it feel a bit more elegant. Absolutely elegant. The design is meticulous, but Tristan and his model and makeup artist girlfriend, Kendall Aberdeen, are happy for their new pup, Mishu, to have the run of the place. So the renovations are done. Are you happy with how it all turned out? Yes, definitely. A lot of work, but almost there. You know, I think when you take on a renovation like this in four months, it's always going to be stressful. Mm. But it's amazing looking around now once it's done, being able to create a sanctuary out of what was once just a building site is amazing. 
Kendall, which part of the house is your favorite? Definitely the kitchen. It's a beautiful open space. We spend most of our time there as a family and it's a great place to entertain. Tristan, having acquired all this interior design experience, what advice would you give to young budding designers? Well, I think the most important thing and the thing that I found when I go overseas with my international work is it's important to stay authentic to the way you perceive design to be. I think South Africa has a spirit of design and I think we should lean more into that than trying to emulate European or American styles. From here, our master designer opens a new hotel in Italy, then a bar in Dubai, in between taking Mishu for walks. It's all got me thinking, our surgeons could maybe do with a little Tristan Duplessis drama in our theatres. Coming up, hip-hop's Gigi Lemayne takes charge of her own career and leads women rappers in headlining their own gigs. From the day she arrived on the scene, rapper Gigi Lemayne has done it her way. And so it continues. The Gigi Gang Show is her latest gig, an all-female lineup of artists to change the narrative of SA Hip Hop to one for the whole family. A published poet by the age of 11, Gigi's lyrical skills evolved through rap to see her becoming a hit solo act at 18. Five years on, she's a fully self-sustaining artist. Corner office. Boza Lama Boza Yeah. Boza Lama Boza yeah. I'm about to ball with Lemayne. Yeah, ball with Gigi yeah. Lemayne. Skate, 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 skate. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. It's been a while since we spent time with you. What have you been up to? So many things. I've gone independent. I'm now an independent um, hip hop artist, working on a big projects. You know, just to solidify my name as a as a female hip hop act in Africa. And how has that transition been? It was super. Super challenging and overwhelming. Going great, but super overwhelming. It's just crazy waking up every morning knowing that like everything is on you. But I think we're coping really well with the team. You could be considered a lyrical genius. What are some of the secrets to your trade? For me, if I don't constantly feed my mind, you get things like writer's block and stuff. So I'm just like constantly trying to learn new things, trying to research. And yeah, the writing's going absolutely amazingly well. And I know that the next project is going to be really cool. Let's talk about your new track, Buzzer, with Cuesta. What is that experience like? So for one, Cuesta is the national treasure. I feel like he's just one of those people who continues to do us super, super proud. And the song really came about like really easy because we just have this synergy. It was just this energy about telling the story of the township and you know how we can glamorize it and still be proud of it. And I guess that's what got people talking. Miss Lemayne sees her biggest achievement as the Gigi Gang Show, her all-female hip-hop gig recently held in Soweto, one which she insisted be family-friendly. A project like this is super important because, I mean, it just highlights how there is talent in the feminine voice. It highlights that there needs to be representation and that we are equally as capable of creating something out of this world for our audiences. What did you learn from your own struggles and how did you heal from it? Wow, I mean, I had a very tough, you know, upbringing and I think just facing reality and deciding that you need help, you know, so just like educating myself about counselling and I have embarked on this journey where I've started with meditation, just like a super healthier lifestyle, you know, protecting the energies around me, the people who I decide to bring in and out of my life and of course church and then, you know, after church we have the lunch and then we have a really cool basketball game in my family. I was saying I'm good at it but... I try my best, <laughs> I try my best. So definitely I think just those different bits and pieces help create an environment of serenity and just like peace and happiness and it just works. <laughs> At Wits University, Gigi graduated cum laude in media studies and anthropology. Though for a while at least, even her bestie, anthropology and politics graduate Tolakele Skosan was unaware of her music career. You are Gigi's best friend, so you must have had quite an incredible journey. Where did you guys meet? 
No, it's been amazing. I mean, we went to university together, so that's how we met. So we spent like the first year of knowing each other without me even knowing what she's doing. So I even remember watching TV and I see this girl go up the stage to collect the hip hop award for newcomer. And then I like literally watch up here. I'm like, but we've been together for a year and you don't even tell me that this is what you do. But from then we've been literally like the bestest friends ever. What is it about her that made you say, we are gonna be best friends forever? She's very kind, but also she's very feisty. So the minute that feistiness comes out, you're like, that's my girl. So yeah, this was like one of the things that literally just made, like when I saw her, I was like, yeah, we're gonna be friends for a very long time. Endorsed by major international brands, this hip-hop go-getter is a major influencer whose style is followed down to the finest detail. You seem to be enjoying this quite a lot. Do you get to do things like this often? Yeah, once a week I try to come in here. I mean, Linz is amazing with the nails. She's super artistic. I feel like nails and hair are accessories to a woman to really bring out the clothing and bring out your amazing face and, you know, everything else. As an artist, do you think there's pressure to look a particular way? Definitely, but I think once you uh, acknowledge that you're creative, it, it begins to become a very funny and challenging experience. So I go out to look for hairstyles that nobody's done, and even if somebody has done them, I try to really um, get inspiration from that and, and do it in 2019. So for instance with this, if you're familiar with the rapper Debrat and Lisa Left Eye from TLC, this was actually inspired by them. And yeah, now we've got a new age Debrat in 2019. Come on girl, and you're slaying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Harmony. Thank you. <laughs> Gigi's mom, Sarah Manny, has always had her back. Working as a nurse to support her family, she was the one person who believed in her daughter's entertainment career. I had the pleasure of spending time with Gigi, and she's quite cool, but I'm curious, how was she when she was a kid? Yeah, she was a quiet kid. Loved reading a lot. You know, that was a passion. A school as well, she would write loads of those poems and uh, one of the teachers also felt that she was very good at that. So I suppose that's where her career sort of like in music took off from. Gigi credits you with being her inspiration, but was it difficult accepting her going into the music industry, especially at such a young age? As a mom, you get to know your child. You get to know what support system to give her. And I did that. I think it was just like a conscious decision from the time I turned 18 to decide that, look, my mom was going to be that support structure for me. So I think we discussed everything from mm -hmm. boys to music yes. to, <laughs> to hair yeah. to, yeah. to our favorite soapy. <laughs> so I'm very lucky. I know a lot of kids look at our relationship and they're always like, snap, I wish I had a mom like that. And vice versa, I know a lot of people wish they had a kid like me too. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, I love you. I love you too, love my you. friend. <laughs> So where to from here for Gigi Lemain? So we've got a lot of collaborations around uh, Africa coming up. And I've always felt that my calling was bigger than just the township I was from. I come from a home that's very mixed. We've got family from Zim, we've got family from Namibia, we've got family from South Africa, so many different places. So already, like, it's, it's a lot of hard work being this ambassador, but I'm willing to take it up. As well as her music, Harmony got to enjoy the results of Miss Lemain's newly discovered love for cooking. A rare pleasure on her meteoric rise to the heights of rap. With Mavericks like Gigi breaking new ground by bringing it to the family, a new generation of fans enters the hip-hop fold. And they said rap would never last. Next, from a rooftop garden to a jacuzzi lounge, this week's location took three years to build and not a single day was wasted. In matters of the heart, I'm a loyal dude, a one-man, one-woman kind of guy. But when it comes to top-billing homes, I change my mind every Saturday. Tonight, I've fallen in love again. And looking around, can you blame me? Bantry Bay is where the owner of this terraced getaway comes to escape the business of life. Dispensing with shiny or glossy materials, architect Larry Levy and interior designer Abby van Veek conceived these spaces to provide a sense of natural, easy calm. Larry, this whole area is known for its beautiful landscapes, but how did you design the home to maximize on the views and topography? 
When we first saw the site, we knew that it was an absolute fit for the client. We fell in love with the site. So we decided that in order to capitalize on the views, we would have to terrace the building. And that is in fact what makes the house quite unique is that every single room in the house has actually got a sea view. And that's where we've introduced the timber screens, which, where you'll also see the ocean, but it also blocks out the neighbors. The minute I walked in here, I noticed a prominent amount of pink light, but yet no light fittings. We have an incredible relationship with our client. And as the project developed, we got closer and closer to him. And one day we were sitting in a meeting with him and we were discussing colors and I was very much, everything was being neutral and pared down. And he suddenly said, well, I like pink. And we decided to make pink a big feature in the home, but in a very subtle way. So we've, we've used pink glass that the light shines through and washes down one of the most important features of the home, which is a wall, which is a spine that runs through the house. The combination of natural timber with stone was chosen to reflect the homeowner's love of Southern Africa. And the organic feel has been subtly paired with modern design. Raoul, this is actually one of my favorite spaces in the house, even though it's a non-space. It's just part of an extension of the staircase. But what I love about it is that it just pops out over the garden. And because it's got this glazing, you can actually see down into the garden and you get this feeling like you're floating. And I just love the way the off-shutter concrete came out. Even though it, it wasn't perfect, I think that's what makes it beautiful. And we had fun choosing this piece from Tonic. It sets off nice from the off-shutter concrete. Through the build, the homeowner often visited from Germany, taking motorbike rides or going fishing with his architecture and design team. The house embodies that celebration of life. Wow, I love how this space opens up and it's inviting me right onto the ocean. Yes, so Raoul, when entertaining, it's very important that your outside spaces and your inside spaces connect. And that was very important to the client. And also the views are not too shabby. Not shabby at all. I would love to come home to a space like this. It gives me that real feeling of calmness. Our client actually lives overseas, so he comes here for a retreat. And it was important that we gave him that space that was calm, so that when he came here, he felt relaxed. And to achieve this, we chose materials in the architecture and the interiors. We chose very calming, neutral palette textures. But not only that, we actually employed an acoustic engineer to make sure that no outside sounds or noise pollution infiltrated the space. The natural neutral materials allow the client's African wood and stone pieces to shine. It's a collection which he and Larry flew to Joburg to find. And amongst all that natural material you've used, I can't help but notice that pop of color behind me in the patio. Yes, so Raoul, the seas uh, have a different mood and the, the colors always change. And so we thought to incorporate that into the, the textures and the hues and the fabrics of blues in the outside area. Well, the space seems perfect for entertaining too, especially with that sleek modern design of that kitchen. I live vicariously through my client when we designed that kitchen because I love to cook and I like to eat. So when we designed that, we just wanted it to be as functional as possible by concealing as much as possible. The fridge is integrated and in fact, the whole coffee station opens up, but when it's closed, it just looks like paneling. So the island is a pop of black with a neolith countertop and a mild seal front with LED glows around it. The benefit of being both the architects and interior designers on the project was that Larry and Abby could choose interior items throughout the three-year building process. The structure, lighting, fabrics, furniture, art and gardens could evolve as one. Oh, these steps really have an extra sense of character from these light fittings over here to this green space. It's incredible. So light actually plays quite an important role in the staircase. These lights are purpose designed and made for the space. We wanted you to be able to experience as you walk down to see the sculptural impact of these lights. They are also suspended from an atrium which creates natural light. We also have these floor lights which look like piano keys. Yeah. The idea of the atrium is because we felt that we had taken away quite a lot of the landscaping and we wanted to bring it into the home. So wherever we could, we brought in some greenery. 
It isn't all zen and serenity. The bar, cigar lounge, home theater, and jacuzzi are not quiet places. I can imagine quite a few parties have gone down over here. I'm sure that there have been. Um, when we discussed the brief with the client, he suggested that we separate the guest bedrooms from the master suite because his children are actually grown and they're university age. So I imagine that they would be coming home a little bit later and they would want to party a little bit longer. So we incorporated this space into the guest bedroom suite. With statement leather safari style chairs and a light textured minimalist theme, the guest suites evoke the savannah, bush and deserts of Southern Africa. I noticed you used a different color scheme to what you did upstairs. With this area you have a lot more African popping. So we have, we have our brass finishes, our bronze mirror finishes and our dusty pink textures. We decided that we felt we wanted it to look more like a cigar lounge, kind of smoky brown, a little bit darker, a little bit more cozy, but then we also wanted to use the pink again. And the brass is muted and it has an African feel, but it's also very cigar lounge. One of the standout features of this floor has got to be that jacuzzi. Why though is it the perfect spot? One of the reasons why we chose that spot is we, we just saw this incredible view that was framed already by borrowed vegetation. And we saw the opportunity architecturally to actually create a frame. So the jacuzzi is actually situated almost in a wooden box. And then we detailed the sunken seating area, which our interior department then chose the fabrics for. Yes. So for the jacuzzi, we opted with both greys and blacks and white, again with African textures and patterns. So that would pop against the ocean. And then we also use the LED light strip in the tip of the cladding. Surrounded by so much natural wood, the elevator is about the only glossy steel element to be found. Add the extensive garden features throughout, coupled with the ocean views, and the structure feels part of the scenery, not man-made. I believe this home has two master bedrooms, but have they been done exactly the same? No, actually they're quite different. Um, this one's a little bit more masculine, and um, we chose dark, leathery, muted tones, and offset that with jewel colors, using some handmade felt for the cushions and the throw. Um, even the bathroom is black slate, which is very dark and gentlemanly, and it has brass finishes, so it's quite luxurious. And then the other bedroom is a lot more feminine. We chose pale colors, pale grays, and warm timbers, and um, some dusty pinks. Very soft, muted tones, more gentle, calm. The architecture is made to feel far lighter by using untinted shades of wood as accents or as a complete theme in the study. Complemented by exterior designer Brett Chilcott's indigenous gardens, floating over the sea views, the effect is one of African zen. Can you tell me more about the beautiful green spaces that you've incorporated into the design of this home? The client asked us to maximize the impact of these green spaces and he wanted to be connected both physically and uh, visually through all the levels of the garden. So from the unexpected sunken entrance garden and the terraces provide a lush and calm backdrop. And as you descend down the levels, the trees provide screening as well as give a sense of scale and proportion to the home as well as the adjacent buildings. I'm noticing more and more rooftop gardens, but why in your opinion are they becoming so popular? Now, I think as our city living is changing and densification increases, the traditional garden spaces are getting smaller and smaller. And our clients still want these green spaces and appreciate the value that they add both aesthetically and emotionally to their lives and to their experience. Not only is there the obvious uh, visual appeal to them, but they help with building heat flux, they reduce stormwater runoff, and uh, provide natural habitat, which is often lost during the construction process. Thank you guys so much for showing me around this incredible home and well done on executing on a brilliant masterpiece. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for having us. In an area where steel and glass have long ruled, this design team have left a softer, more serene footprint on the Atlantic shore, and others are sure to follow. This is the one. From tonight, I only have eyes for this house.
but ask me again in a week. Next up, master pianist Sibu Mash Mashilwane shows how a simple tune becomes an irresistible jazz improvisation. Of all the cats in music, with every kind of hip name under the sun, for my money, the hippest I ever heard is Busi Mash Mashalwane. As understated and cool as you expect a jazz man to be, this one is also the best African jazz artist of 2019. As a youngster, Sibu Mash Mashalwane visited his brother at work as he always played blues and jazz CDs. Today, the award-winning pianist has already recorded three albums of his own. Where did your love for music and your jazz journey begin? I grew up in a family where jazz was like bread and peanut butter. It was an everyday thing, you know. So from my aunts, from my uh, mother, you know, they always played jazz. So that's where it comes from. How important is it to share your knowledge of music with the new South African generation? And it helps me to stay relevant to the music and to also stay relevant to the students, you know. I also learn from them, by the way. It's a give and take. And what is some of the best advice you've received from him? As much as we do other types of jazz, like bebop, your swing, he encourages us a lot to stick to your roots and to have the best of both worlds, I guess. The university's Howard College Theatre has become a second home. Yo, man. <laughs> I leave you for two minutes, man, and then you're already occupying my space, brother. <laughs> so where does your creativity come from and what is that process like? I get influences from anywhere. For example, I was in Mozambique, the owner in a restaurant was calling a waiter, you know, but the way he called the waiter to me, it was like, oh man, that's, that, that's the beat. That's so musical, you know, <laughs> I want to get that, you know, yeah. and I want to build from that. Yeah. So that's how I even compose music, you know. So when I hear someone playing anything rhythmic, to me it's like, it, it brings me back to my identity. Well, I would love to develop my own style and musical identity. Can you teach me a little something? Definitely, man. Actually, from what I heard when I walked in here, I was like, this, this guy, I need to teach him something, man. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to teach you just three notes, right? right. So, so first it's just this note. Yeah. Can you hear it? Dun, dun, dun. Try okay. it. I oh, mean, you're such a quick learner, brother. <laughs> yeah. You're not far, eh? OK. <laughs> so, so what you're going to do is Can you feel okay. that? Yeah. <laughs> Man, well, geez, bro, that was amazing. Thank you for listening, but I'm gonna let you play your masterpiece because you were shredding these keys. Hey, <laughs> <that's sure. easy. laughs> Tradition and dance is a big inspiration for MASH. So we took in the Punzi Cultural Museum in search of the next creative spark. This museum has the largest collection of South African artifacts. How important is it for us to showcase and treasure our cultural heritage? So it's very important that we understand who we are. So this museum is about that, a feel-good museum for Ubuntu art. And we try to showcase that to the world, that um, we've got a lot to show. And when you come here, that's what we try to show you. Born in Pumalanga, surrounded by Ndebele, Pedi and Swazi tradition, Sibu's jazz thrives on our diverse society. So this is where we heal ourselves. This part of the museum is called healing. So we believe that healing starts in the mind. If you see something beautiful, you feel beautiful. So healing is a mental type of thing. This actually resonates with uh, the whole concept of uh, my album that is recently nominated by the Summers, which is Closer to Home, you know, because the whole point with that album, Closer to Home, is this environment. Like, healing comes from the mind and from what you see. 
to me, then the same healing comes from what you are listening to, you know, what is being captured by the music. So that album is all about that, capturing our identity as a South African. Not only have you released um, Close to Home, but you're also still studying your PhD with a focus on, let me get this right, uh, construction of musical home through South African jazz. What does that even mean? So to me, what I'm trying to do is to find the, the peculiar musical characteristics that make South African jazz. What are those ingredients that in the music makes it sound South African? So that's the whole point of this study. And to also use it as a resource for teaching and learning. And I'm just looking forward to sharing South Africa to the world, you know, through my music, you know, through my studies and in any other possible way. Sibu has committed to releasing seven albums in as many years. With three done and four to go, a wealth of jazz awaits us. Mash, I'm such a fan. Tell us what did it for you. Join the party on hashtag Top Billing to tell us who or what rocked your world tonight. Don't forget our repeat show, Midday Sunday. And until next week, good night and God bless. The best of the good life continues next Saturday as Malcolm Cloak and Christian Gabriel de Toy's latest reveal isn't a collection, but the new house they just finished renovating. DJ Lamise shares how close she came to throwing in the towel before perseverance finally paid off. And from gardener to winemaker, we hear the epic life story of Joseph Defana.